Okay, so I spent the last couple days creating and editing a series of Xbox One X videos. And particularly while I was editing the two terabyte internal upgrade video, my most recent video, I noticed, I, well, I had some time to think about the A and B folder situation and what I might have or could have done better uh, in terms of, of getting the system up and running quicker instead of getting the E106 errors and the E101 errors. And uh, usually when I am working on a system, the system that, that's sent to me doesn't have a working hard drive. So uh, pretty much out of habit, I always do the A and B folder thing and then put the OSU1 files into the A and B folders, um, which I show in this video. Uh, around the 39 minute mark and uh, for those systems that's fine because basically if the system has already been updated or failed to update with the latest OSU one uh, as long as the the system NAND is using the same version as what's in these A and B folders it'll boot without having to use a USB flash drive with the OSU one folders on, on the flash drive or, or files on the flash drive However, if you have a system that's using an older version of the dashboard than the OSU1 files you've downloaded, you're almost sure to get the E106 errors. So why, why the reason I'm pointing this out is what I could have done better in my Xbox One X 2 terabyte upgrade video was first update the system using the existing system drive meaning I take the system out of the box, hook it up to the network, hook it up to the TV, uh, get to the point in the setup where it checks for and does an update. And after that completes, it gets to the point where it wants you to add your account. At that point, just shut the system off and then start building your two terabyte drive and put the A and B folders, um, as I did in the video, and put the OSU one update in those folders. And then the next time I boot, or the first time I boot the two terabyte drive, it should be okay. Uh, basically, if the drive's blank, but you have the A and B folders, what the Xbox One will attempt to do is rebuild the other partitions using these A and B folders. But it can only do that if the system NAND is equal to the system update folders. Okay, when they're not, you get the E106 error because it, it can't use those update files or it considers those update files corrupt. In which case, then you have to use a USB flash drive with the OSU1 on there. But what then happens after that is when you try to update from the USB drive, a lot of the times the A and B folders that you've created will get in the way of the actual process of updating the system, as it did in my video. And that's where you start seeing the E101 errors. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. Take that for what it's worth. It, you only need to do or should only do the A and B folders on the system update partition if you're sure the OSU1 uh, files that you have are equal to what the last update was on the Xbox One system. I mean, if you don't know what the, the, the version is on the Xbox One system, um, there's a way to find out. But if you're not sure, it's still fine to create the A and B folders, but uh, you might run into a few extra steps particularly having to reset the system maybe more than once to actually get it up and running again, as I did in this video. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to point out is while I was editing the video last night, someone had mentioned they were trying to put a four terabyte drive into their, their system, and I hadn't put a lot of thought into that. I tried that a couple years ago. I didn't have much success with it. But, you know, I did, I did wish the guy luck and said, here's what I would do to try to get it to work. Meanwhile, someone else had commented a very similar thing and had pointed to the team executor forms where somebody had posted this image, which shows someone using an internal four terabyte drive. I actually have a couple two and a half inch four terabyte drives. I have two of them, in fact, and um, I was going to try to use them externally and I had some problems with that too. But I, I can't actually try this out. I, I just don't know. I guess I'm, I'm going to gauge your interest here. So if you've gotten this far along in the video, leave a comment if you have any interest in actually having a process for creating a, a, a four terabyte drive. I can say with 100% certainty that if you do create a four terabyte drive like you see in this video here, that you won't be able to reset it. I don't know what they did. Um, I'd have to try some stuff out myself to find out what they did. I did private message this guy to see if he was willing to give me the heads up on, on what his process is. 
since there is no standard four terabyte Xbox One system, um, you definitely won't be able to reset it. If you do reset it, depending on the GUID header you put on the drive, so what I'd say is I'd probably put a two terabyte header on it, on the disk itself, so, so change the GUID to the two, two terabyte G, GUID. So even if you did have to reset the system, you'd basically reset it back down to two terabytes, um, which is better than resetting it down to, say, 500 gigabytes. Prior to this year, uh, particularly prior to June of this year, 2017, um, this was the process we were already had to deal with. So meaning that anyone that was upgrading to two, ter to two terabytes couldn't reset their system anyways. So this isn't all that different than that. So if people are interested, I'll do a video on it on how to upgrade to four terabytes, but I'm not sure if people are interested. So if you're interested, um, like the video, leave a comment, whatever. Just, just let me, I just want to gauge people's interest. Because it's one of those things where I'm not sure if people are really interested in having a, a non-standard drive that they can't reset in the future. But as long as you don't have any errors, you should be fine. I, I had a system that was using a non-standard two terabyte drive for a couple of years, and I never was too concerned with the resetting but uh, once I found out how to create a real two terabyte drive there wasn't any point to using that method anymore okay well I've already talked longer than I expected to I just wanted this to be a quick video um, but I just wanted to point out those two things maybe this will help somebody I don't know but anyways so we'll see what the future holds I'm gonna have another video I'm gonna post soon about some mods I'm gonna do on the Xbox the OG Xbox and the Xbox 360, and I'll probably just post a video on what I plan on doing and see if anybody's interested in that either. This channel's been built upon the Xbox One and basically just upgrading the internal drive, so I'm not sure of the interest of my subscribers and other things. So I'm going to try to gauge that. I also have some retro consoles such as a PC Engine and a Atari 5200 and uh, let's see, an NES top loader, a bunch of different things I've done mods on in the past that maybe you'd have some interest in seeing. All right, so uh, that should do it.